Hello and uh, welcome to the stream. I'm going to be streaming this game when I work on it, a couple hours each morning maybe. Uh, it's just a little fun game that I'm making based on an old game called Cybertron Mission. And what I have in place right now is just really basic control uh, up, down, left, right. There's no sprites for up and down yet. But I could work on that today. Uh, I do have the shooting working. I do have the rooms changing. I don't know how robust that is, but I know that it's a good start. I don't have any death for the player either. Just um, he can run through things. He does get blocked by the walls, but in the original game, if you touch the walls, you got electrocuted. So I do want to bring that in. Uh, but I'll need some sprites for that as well. So I just want to talk about some of the code that I've got in place uh, and how this all kind of works at the minute. And again, I'm not too sure how foolproof it is or you know whether it would break. Um, I do have a little bit of a kind of looping room thing happening here because I only have three rooms, and I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, basically, I can just run through this room and it will keep <laughs> just infinitely stuck in the same room. Even if you go to the se second room there and you go left, it will take you back here. Even though I went down the corridor twice, um, it's just the way the colliders work at the minute. And yeah, I need to I need to figure out how I'm going to do the maps and things like that, or whether I make it one big map and just switch the the viewpoint, which would probably make more sense. But I do want to randomise the rooms, that's the way the original game worked. Um, it would kind of procedurally generate the map and it would have a... I'm pretty sure I had a, a, pre, a bunch of pre-made rooms that it could join together based on if there was exits in certain sides. So that's kind of the way I want to do it, is to figure that out. So I'll show you a little bit what I've done. I've got this character in place. Just some basic animation. I used a sprite here. Um, I've just fixed up the animation a little bit more. So the cool thing is with any artwork you make, you know, once you've decided how many frames it's going to be and that it all works, you can always go back and fix some of the pixels and things. Um, so that's kind of what I've did here is just been refining this and adding bits. And all I have is I'm running right and shooting, right. So how that works, I brought it into Game Maker, into the Sprite section. So I've made a little folder as well. So I've got my player here. And um, I've got the little cursor down here. I've also edited the collision mask uh, just for his feet. And the reason for that is, well, I'm not too worried about <coughs> um, bullets or anything hitting him, or if he makes contact with uh, something, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do that a different way. I might have a an extra object that follows him, and that's like his actual body hitbox, like maybe his body or his head or whatever. Um, but there'll just be separate objects that follow him around, because I want his actual collision to be at his feet in just a rectangle that size. Um, for the reason that if if the collider was his whole body and oops and run about here is I think it's run about here is where the the, coll the collision is. In fact, I'll show you. If I go to the room. <coughs> <coughs> yep. You see how this collider actually goes past there a bit, and his collider's down here. So that means he can run up to this point, and he'll look quite good in front of that wall. So that's the purpose of that. If I made his whole body that collider, he'd already be colliding with that wall and he wouldn't be able to move. So he goes to there and it kind of rumbles a bit because he's getting pushed one back. Um, and he gets stuck if you do try to do diagonals. So, But if you touch the walls anyway, you get electrocuted. I'm going to have like little kind of sparks appear if you get too close and then it would zap you. <coughs> Something like that, and that would be mm, that would be kind of tricky to do. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it yet. 
but I'll figure it out. So, yep, yeah, so there's colliders for different things. As you can see, the red colliders, I'll just turn off everything here. And this is my little collision setup. So I've got this object and I've just placed it down. So I've got my. I'm kind of like doing this back to front just to give me an idea. So, collision area, that's my main collider. So I'll bring that in and all I do is click it and stretch it. Right. And if I want it to be vertical, I'll bring another one in and stretch it that way. Right. So I've got my own collider layer, which I use for testing all the collisions. I don't have to put anything on objects. I don't have to use instances for absolutely everything. You know, that's kind of like a beginner's myth that you would have to make an instance with colliders on it and put them all in place. That would be quite an overhead for the computer. So I've also got these um, colliders here. Oh, I just moved out of the room. Um, let's go back there. So there's this one, which is actually an object called, if I just click it, it's called New Room N for New Room North. So if I collide with this box, it's going to send me to a new room and I've came from the north, is basically what I've done. So what I have on that object is nothing at all. All it is is an object that I use for collision. Everything's on the player. If I collide with new room north and I'm in the start room, it's going to go to room 11, top right. Now what I do want to do is make a kind of list of possible rooms that it could be, but I want to kind of pre-shuffle that at the very start of the game. So it kind of shuffles the whole level up, makes decisions of what room's going to be where, make sure they're all kind of like tying together, which is for me the tricky bit. Um, so I'll just show you what I mean in uh, this app here. So I've got the start level right, let me just draw it. This is Photopea by the way, this is a free online Photoshopy type thing. So why is he not drawn? It does help if you uh, have a different colour. Oh, I need to click OK. Um, so I've got a start room and that's a dead end and you can go like this way and that way. Right, so I'll always basically have the exits at the same point right, of each of each um, map. So it makes it easier to place the player in the right place when he goes through. So there's my north, my east, my south and my west. So when he goes from this room to that room, um, see it's, it's already tricky in my head how I'm going to do this. He go, He's going to go to like a choice, right? There might be a selection of rooms that I can go to, but this is all pre-decided. I don't want it to randomise as soon as he goes to that room, because then that room would always look different. It's like somebody moved the furniture around. So I want to like pre-decide all these, all this layout at the very, very start before you play the game. So I need some kind of way of storing it, like an array or a dictionary list, or uh, like a DS, is a DS list, um, or anything else like that, like a string or whatever. <coughs> so. He's going to go there, that's going to be, definitely going to be something there, and maybe it's a room like that, right? Nothing there, nothing there, but he always comes out at the same point. I'm always going to have the north collider there, I'm always going to have the west collider there, so that would be the east collider, and so on, right? And he goes from room to room. So I'll just jump back to show you what's happening. So if the room is the start room, and I've collided with the, the north, Collider, he's going to go to this room 11TR, right? Now, this TR is just my way of saying it's a T junction to the right, right? I'll, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to utilize that later. Like, I can analyze, analyze the string of the room, or uh, I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. So, let me show you some other things about the player movement. I know that some of you guys are interested in that. So, Here's my create event. I use use a state machine uh, where I've got idle is one, run is two, shoot is three. Now you could also use constants or enums for this. I just like the old fashioned way. It's so much simpler. Enums, you, know, you have to dot things and set it all up like 
it's some other object or something like that but I just like idle equals one, run equals two, shoot equals three, state equals idle so that's how he starts so this word state is important uh, the minimum frame and the maximum frame is like the frame range that it can go between and that's obviously dependent on the state <coughs> and then the frame, the actual frame that it's on animation speed, how fast the animation is going facing, one for positive, negative one for flip the other way, that's how I get them to face the other way x speed, horizontal speed and y speed, up and down speed so uh, I've put in this draw event some stuff here, I don't really need to put these in the draw event but I figured I'd just immediately uh, before this, like in theory I could put all this determination stuff in a step event um, so there's nothing to stop me just actually cutting that out there and putting it in here right and the begin step it's annoying that this is here it should be like before it uh, it's just a game maker thing like I want to drag that around there because it happens before step event I've no idea why it's there because right, you go begin step step end step uh, begin draw draw end draw you know in case you need to order certain things um, okay <coughs> but really you just put everything in the uh, the step event in the order that you need that's the old way of doing it but it's, I've started to use begin step a lot more because it's good for surface checking before you start using surfaces um, and I've also found if you if you call a script if you call a function to check surfaces um, doesn't work so well don't know why but I find it easier just to uh, in the begin step check any surfaces there if they exist or not uh, especially if you're minimizing the, the window and maximizing it again I'm just going to move this tablet it's going to get in the way <coughs> So I'm kind of sorry, going off on a tangent. Um, so what happens in this step event? Well, it's using uh, place three, place three. Now, if you don't know what something does, just um, just middle mouse click it, and what will happen is it will open up the manual and tell you what it does, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you can use this function to check see if <coughs> the calling answer will collide with any instance flagged as solid in your game so I do have the collision area object flagged as solid right solid instance will automatically be placed back in the previous position when in collision so yeah um, anyway the player basically um, so he if, if there's nothing there he can move so we're adding x speed times facing because if he's facing left and right I should eventually have I don't know a minute so yeah yeah I'll have like different animation for up and down which is which is what I want to add in a minute so you get me you get to see me do a bit of pixel stuff um, so otherwise he has to go back one point now if I just had nothing happen here so like he doesn't actually move this would be interesting I've not really checked this um, <coughs> I wonder if he'll just not vibrate anymore mm -hmm. that's weird difference just gone disappeared on me. What did I change? Did I change something? Alright, well ah, okay, <laughs> I turned all this off. Let's get rid of that. I didn't realise these actually get affected by <laughs> until now. Right, so now if I move up, that's actually better, right, so he was, he was vibrating because I thought maybe I need to minus one off, 
but now he's not jutting about the place so that fixed that bug so it basically means if there's nothing there just don't don't move which is handy let's go back to that so why is that good right I'm basically saying if the place is free I can move right else I can't move I don't even need an else in there I just need that to be the case right you know only if that place is free can I move so that should work all the same there we go so and we don't get the weird vibration so I don't need that minus one that was just some thing that I threw in there because I thought I had it I had to have it and realize I don't uh, he does stick though you know if you if you're trying to move right and down he will stick and that is because I'm pushing towards the wall maybe I could figure out a way to get around that later um, but for now there's no real way about it uh, so if the state equals idle I set the range this is the frame range so we'll start frame and end frame I say min frame and max frame maybe I should change them to start and end and if you do want to change a variable name you can go up to search and replace put in the the name that you want to search for and I'll call this uh, staff frame right so really like that like I said, I'm trying to keep the same number of letters you know I'll just call it start frame and I can do replace all and then it changes everything and instead of that I'll do end frame FRM is what I always use for the word frame. Just I like shorter words. Uh, replace all. So everything has changed. Start frame and end frame. That's probably a bit easier for you to read. So back to the, the step event. So checking the collision. I'm changing the start frame and end frame of the animation based on the state. And the state is just a bunch of numbers. I could say if state equals 1 then this, state equals 2 then that, but I would forget what 1, 2 and 3 meant. So I've actually put those into these variables here. And yeah, I could make those constants because they're always going to be the same. There's probably a tiny difference in how it manages those numbers if they're going to be constants. But for a game like this, who cares? You know, it's like maybe just a good practice thing or you just want to like be doing everything that game maker does um but i'm easy uh like a sunday morning okay so back to this uh, step event another thing i like to do in begin step is check all my key inputs so that i know that that's happening first then my step event so it does whatever it needs to do so i'm also checking the the frame ranges and uh the frames being the frame number has been increased by the animation speed. Uh, so first of all, if it's less than the start frame, make sure it becomes the start frame of the animation because it could be that I was on idle and the start frame zero, and I suddenly start shooting. The start frame is five. So if that start frame is if that uh, frame number is at zero already, I want it to be equaling equaling the start frame if I'm shooting, and then there's the end frame. So as it increases, it becomes that. Okay, so so that's all good. That all works quite well. Uh, let's have a look at the begin step. I should have showed you that first, but anyway. So I do make the state idle from the get-go. Let's basically say, right, you're standing still, right? And you're, you don't have any animation speed and you're not moving. Okay, until I start pressing letters. Now, keyboard check means if you're pressing the letter right it doesn't mean on down or release so that's keyboard check press and then while it's down it's keyboard check right it's gonna like pass through it be checking it it's conducting with it right um so i'll get the wires set up now i could do something like if keyboard check d uh i could do something like moving right equals true and then check that 
because I might want different keys, but I like to just do like if keyboard check or D or keyboard check uh, VK, right? Or whatever. I, I just like to do them all like that. And just keeps it all in one place. I don't need to nest it in different places, right? So I'll start to add these for uh, left as well. That way I can use the arrow keys. And we got down. And then we're going to have uh, up. So if you are using the odd thing to detect an actual letter, make sure you put a capital letter in there. If you do a lowercase, it won't it won't work. It just seems to work with capital letters. So uh, that's the way it detects it. it. Doesn't check for both kinds. It's not. Uh, it is case sensitive, but it needs to be uppercase. So what happens when I push right? Well, X speed becomes one. The animation speed gets set, so that's the the frame rate of the actual animation of the character. Uh, so if I basically change that to zero, it should be moonwalking, and we just see the animation speed like that. And the right arrow key also works now. So I'll just change that back to one. So that's the fr that's the speed I want him to move every frame. He's moving one pixel every frame. So every second, at 60 frames per second, he's moving 60 pixels. All right. So that's all good. Um, the difference with A, the only difference with A is that he's facing negative one. Now that's all good. I'm just telling that variable to be one or negative one for left and right. But how do I incorporate that into everything else? Right, and there's the shooting one. Um, so we've got state equals shoot, animation speed. Uh, uh, it doesn't move, so it stops him from moving. And if the frame equals the end frame of that animation, because it's got a lot kind of blast, that's when it creates. Uh, this instance now it's set in the instance that it creates to this variable so I can tap into it so that I can make the bullet face the right direction right this is quite a clever way of talking to something that you've just made if you you know make an object you just instantly get its details um, do you know what I don't actually have probably I don't have a way of destroying this bullet yeah I should really destroy the bullet. So what I can do to destroy the bullet is either have a timer on it um, or wait till it's outside the room. Uh, either one works. Now if you want to do outside room you should do add event other outside room and I'm just going to do with self. I think there's other ways of doing this but I've always got into the habit of uh, doing it this way. Instance destroy Right, so that basically means with me, kill me, right? But I could probably just do I could probably do instance destroy self as well. Right, that might also work. I've never tried that. So let's just give it a go, okay, see if it flags up an error. Right. Uh I've no idea if it's working, so I want to debug it. Now I've got this little object called overview which does this little external keyboard clicks like escape to get, get out of the game but I'm also going to use it to draw I'll do draw GUI and I can put in here instance count instance count I think, uh, so I'll do draw text 0 0 string instant count instance count right and that should be good so now I should have a little number of number instances, so it's 18 in here. One, why 18? Anyway, it looks like the number's gone down. I think as many as 14 instances in this room. Oh, the colliders, yeah, the colliders, they're all instances, of course, because they're objects. So in a way, yeah, I do use instances to do collision detection, but they don't have to be individual single little tiles. 
for each block I, I can just stretch them um, so yeah I was just checking to see that number goes down when the bullets get the room so with that off if I was to if I was to go back to the bullet and turn that off Look how that number's going up. You probably can't see it so well, but it's like at 40, 50, 60. You know, it just, it's just going up and up. Right, and they're not dying. They're miles away to the right somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, I do need that. So that's important to make sure you're getting rid of objects or recycling them somehow. You know, have a pool, what they call like a pool of objects that you can have. 10 bullets in the screen at any one time um, as soon as bullet gets so far it gets you know reset and ready to re right, reuse so its position gets sent to some crazy number as a way to do it so if the bullet was outside the room um, you can make its position equal minus 999 minus 999 or whatever and then when you shoot again it checks to see how many bullets are Kind of like being stored away in space somewhere and it grabs those again and shoots them and then when it goes so far they get sent back to 999 that way you never actually destroy the object you're just recycling it and that's good for bullets because um like creating an instance and storing it there might be a memory overhead to that like maybe a small amount but a good way to check stuff is to bring up your task manager Right, and you can use the resource manager as well, but I, I got used to using task manager uh, just to check like memory usage. And you can check out your little game there. And uh, I see it's using 13.5 meg and you can start shooting. So it's making instances all the time, but they are getting destroyed. Now I'm just checking to see if that memory will change. So it's still at 13.5, 13.6 now. So it could be that constantly making these bullets is uh, having a bit of an overhead. Let's see if it goes to 13.7. Because eventually, like if you're playing the game for like two hours straight and there's no uh, there's no form of garbage collection, you've got a memory build up, not so much a memory leak, more like a kind of build up. It's dropped back down to 13.5, so it's fine, right? So it's doing its own garbage collection there. It's Once it's destroying that instance, it's, it's deleting the memory for it. <coughs> it's good to check little things like that if you think, you know, that might linger or, uh, you know, you don't really know how much memory you're going to be using. So I usually check it with that, and if I'm really stuck, you can use the debugger compile here and what it will do is it will launch a little uh, thing like that and you see a little access and now it's communicating with GameMaker and you can see this and you can look at uh, there's different things, let's see graphics senses, others, variables, graphics um, you can look at this to see how much memory it's using down here, it's really small but I can see that it's using 1.87 meg which is a little bit different from what the Windows one was showing you 1.88, 192, 193, 194, let's just keep going 1967. So I wonder if those bullets really are having an effect because it's gone up. I'm just going to leave it alone. It's stuck at 1.99. Let's do some shooting. To it's 1.89 again. So I think every now and again it's clearing itself up. If that's the case, if it's the bullets that are doing that or just some other background stuff. I mean, it's tiny anyway. Cool, um, so back to how do I make it go from room to room 
and then I'll do a bit of, bit, bit of uh, pixel stuff. So I'm just going to stop that and go back to my workspace and that's closed. Uh, yeah. It's weird why it said room editor, it was actually the debugger. Okay, so so yeah, another thing I just want to talk about is so the, the facing thing, so what way I'm facing. So when I draw the sprite, I'm basically saying the player, the frame number, which we kind of give it the range of, it adds up, it clamps itself, you know, round to the minimum and maximum, or the start and end frames, the X and Y position, facing, so that's on X scale, whether it's facing left or right. Now, for going up and down, that's not as easy as a flip. That's going to be two set, two different sets of sprites. So, uh, I think that's fair enough because all I'll do is just make facing equals one, and that way it keeps it right, and I don't have to flip them up and like vertically, physically. That's always going to be one on the Y, and there's no rotation. The color's white, and it's full alpha. Right, so that's the draw sprite extended. There's some extra functions in there for flipping and scaling and opacity and the, the colour, which is all kind of useful. I could use these later. Um, okay, so he's going to collide with, he's going east. If he's in the start room, he's going to go to this room. I do need a way of putting all these into a category, so I would have something like. Um, Oh gosh, I need, I need to think about this, like how many rooms there could be and put them into uh, like a, a list of East rooms or second room or yeah, I, I have no idea how I'm going to do this yet. This is the technical challenge. I'm not going to think about it just now because you'll see the inside of my head and it will look like turd, <laughs> which it does sometimes. Um, so you can see when I collide with these, I'm just checking, I'm doing it the most basic way right now, that's usually the way I start, it's not going to be the final way, but I basically say if I'm in the start room and I go south, it's going to be this room, right? But ideally, I give it a, a predefined choice of certain rooms. The tricky bit is if I've got procedural generation, and I want the layout to be different every time I play. Let me just jump back to that. Let's say, okay, let's just get rid of all, let's just undo all that. I'll literally get 10 undos. <laughs> oh gosh, just get rid of that. Choose that color, fill that. Do a new layer. Okay. And OK that. Um, so if I've got my start room there, I do want to show you some animation stuff. But I OK, so I've got that. And then I think I go like that. Yeah, so that's that's a little start room. Right. And then this could lead to a whole possibility of rooms. It might be a room like that. It might be a room like this. It may be a room like that. And that's going to lead to building up a whole map. If anyone knows how to do this, <laughs> please let me know. Right, because it's going to be a procedural procedural generation. So room one, why are you suddenly going slow? Room two might be like that. This might be a crossroad. So I guess I could branch off this first room and then look at the possibilities and it would probably just trail itself into infinity until it blocks itself off. Um, but the thing is it might just be so madly organic. Uh, let's do a straight through for that one. Let's do, let's say well, that can't be that one because there's no exit there. Let me think of this logically. So it's made the first room and it's going to say, okay, of this room, you can have a south exit. So of the south exits, you've got this one, we could give you this one, 
I could give you a straight through, I could give you this one, or I could give you that one. Right? Then it's going to do this one and be like, oh, okay, of this one I could give you that one. <laughs> you see where this is going? Right? Uh, let's just put that there. This is where game design gets tricky. Right, of this one, I could give you that one, I could give you that, I could give you that. You know what, I could also give me a, one of those as well. Rest on a pogo stick. So what I might do is just predefine entire maps. But ideally I want it to be, nah, I'm not going to, I want it to be procedurally generated. I want to challenge myself. I want to be able to do this, right? You can see where it's going. It's, it's a bit of a headache. Right, so let me just see that I've covered everything before I do some sprite stuff. So state machine, state equals idle, which means it's doing nothing. Um, uh, it should be the begin step next. I wish they would reorganize that. Um, the begin step basically says, okay, your state is idle until I tell you otherwise through the inputs, uh, which means your animation speed is zero. Um, also your start frame is zero, but that that just happens. How does that just happen? Uh, yeah, because basically frame would equal zero. I mean, I don't need it. Um, I don't actually need it. Why don't I need it? So the step event. Now, if I have that in there. Yeah, look, he's flying. It's like he's on a jetpack. It's not animating anymore because if I have that in there, it's constantly being reset. So why doesn't that happen to animation speed? Why is animation speed to zero? Because it gets overrode, and with idle, there's only one frame anyway. Now, if he was in idle and he was doing something like that, just kind of breathing or something. And I had animation speed set to zero, it would never accumulate the the number. Animation speed wouldn't have a value. But even if I put in like uh, one in there, he won't do anything because the start and end frames of idle are zero, right? So nothing's happening there. Now I could make him do something like this. Let's try that. Let's put in a couple of frames. Now what I need to be mindful of is. Um, if I've already got my animation set up and I'm starting to interject frames in here, which really I should if they're going to be together, uh, I'm going to have to change all the numbers of stuff, which isn't a big deal. It's just what has to be done. So I'm going to put in a frame. So I'll do new empty frame. Yep. Oops. That should actually be there. Let's put that there. New empty frame. Sorry, my resolution's absolutely tiny because I'm using a 4K monitor. So you just have to sort of guess what I'm doing. I wish I could scale all this up, but I can't. Um, and I'm not for changing the monitor resolution because it makes Game Maker impossible to use for me. Um, okay, so I want to copy everything in this frame to that frame. What just happened there? No, oh, it did it, and it also added uh, an extra frame. All right. So what I'll do is I'll just make them sort of go down a bit. Uh, just the upper body. Drag that down, and I can just test that like so what is it? I'll just hide the belt and maybe I can bring these down as well you can see I'm using a very limited color palette of these colors here And the reason for that is I want a retro look to it. I want it to look old school. Let's put a little one pixel in 
there. And we'll dock down here. So I'll just make them do that, basically, right? That's what that's going to be. And I'll also I need his running down and shooting. So for running down, he's got one, two, three. He's got four frames for running and two for shooting. So I need all that again. So uh, the easiest thing to do is just copy his idle. So paste that at the end here. Why has that done that? Um, new empty frame paste. Oh God. Copy, paste. It's confusing me. Alright. So down the way I need him to be looking more straight on. Usually, uh, my sprite's look an absolute mess first time round. You have to bear with me for a bit, and I'll have to bear with your judgment. If you, if you're judging me here, on my skills, on non-existent skills, uh, I'm okay at pixel art. I'm okay. I'm not amazing or anything, but. I can get by. I'll just make this symmetrical and something like that. Does that kind of work? Yeah, it looks like he's kind of looking at you. Hello. And let's get rid of that little light source. some little highlights there. So I'm just constantly comparing frames and stuff. I do want these to be a bit wider. Like that. Try to make the it look like the box is rotated around. So I need to do his legs as well and his arm. So uh, easiest thing to do is just take him away, get the silhouette right. And draw him back in again, and then like go from there. I'm just gonna fix it up. Fix it up as you need. In fact, I don't like his helmet that wide. Oops. That looks cool. It's also got the little light on his head. I need to get some squash, so I'll be back in a second. I'm going to pause the, the stream video. So yeah, just um, we can turn his body towards. Although I don't need the idle, I don't need them to be idle. I need them to be shooting because his idle is already done. I'm facing right, so that will always be his idle. Um, so this will be more about I'm holding gun up to. I need to think is it a kind of downward or up at his face and down? But I do want it to be easy to tell what he's doing. <sighs> so it's actually going to be that one. That's his old hands. Uh, I want his feet to look a bit different as well. Uh, 
does take a bit of time to get uh, pixels to behave like the way you want them to. I mean, you have to sort of make an effort, um, you know, make a start, and then look at it and think, does that work? Does it not work? So the again, the easiest way to check is to just to draw the silhouette, like do a solid color first. If you can't see the color so well, change the and a sprite you can actually go to preferences and change the background. I wish this would just state the values that um, I always have to set this. Oops, is that 3B? It's like a solid color. Right. So how do you make his gun go down the way? Not gonna be perfect first time. Like it does take a few. That's not too bad. Just take a few tries to get it to behave. That's what I mean when I say behave. Like get it to work the way you want. And it just has to look good enough. It's gonna be hard to get this. It's like it's holding it a weird way, but really it wouldn't be as long as that. It's going to foreshorten, right? It's going to be when things are pointing directly at you. This looks like a dot, but yeah, it's like a full length thing. So I kind of want to foreshorten it like that, just so that it looks more pointing kind of at you for impact, just for the kind of impact of it. Um, it's just, you know, these pixels are just suggestive, they're not photorealistic pixel perfect, you know, it's like, there's no way you would be aiming for that uh, kind of, it'd be mad to try and get that kind of, uh, I mean, one way you can do it is make a 3D model of it and render it which I've done before. Oops, that's all wrong. That's all wrong with the three on the cape. Um, but the problem then is it doesn't look like pixel art anymore. It just looks like a kind of blurry 3D image. It's really small and it doesn't work. It doesn't work as well, I think. Now he's not really holding his hands up. So I'm just doing a lot of comparing here. I'm just checking to see why does that not work as well as it could. Then yeah, I'll make the change. And that purple really isn't. It's not strong enough to sort of define that color. So I'll put a little highlight in there. There's just not enough pixels or resolution to do everything I want. Try to think of um, you know he's shooting at you. <laughs> directly, so it's no, and the bullet's gonna go down. Ah, I, I, I liked it better when it was pointing down more. Oh God, it wasn't this far back. Oh, okay, I'll just draw it in. 
I like the better when the hands are further down because that way it feels like he's going to shoot him down <laughs> believe it or not oh dear right okay I do need to see some sort of weapon let's just define that a bit differently let's use the dark grey just to help separate these tones not easy with limited colours and limited pixels, really not easy. So I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're brave. A little spire thing back there as well. Yeah, it's like a far up is that maybe to there. Brown in there. Uh, I don't think you'd see these hands as much. So that's sort of getting there. That's cool. Right, so now I can maybe put a little periscope in. Yeah, that's working now, and a little highlight at the back. Yeah. Don't need that. Looks like this box got smaller. But it feels like he's going to turn in now. And even though I would like this gun to look like it was higher up or whatever, it needs to point down a bit for, the, for it to work visually for the game. It just needs to be. Not sure about this leg. So yeah, it takes time. It takes time to make packs like that. But once you get oops, once you get that first frame right, the rest is fairly easy, right? The running and stuff will be not too bad. Um I'll do another half hour of this and I need to go on and do my day job, so I'm actually a three D character artist by trade, so I uh, also do a lot of shader stuff and I make assets for the asset stores including Game Maker and Unity, Unreal Engine I uh, also teach uh, game art at local university so yeah I've been doing that for quite a few years now this looks like that's getting a bit that's good Right, that's good. I can go with that. Um, if you do want mentorship, you can go to Game Dev Mentors, and I can give you an hour a week, two hours a week. Um, uh, charge a certain rate on there, so you can go to Game Dev Mentors, and I'll put a link in the the video in case you do want any specific one-to-one -one teaching. Okay, so that's him facing down. Uh, I want to duplicate that layer, so is it a new frame? Yeah, that duplicates it, and I'll do the little shooting thing. So all I do is, well, I do want to recoil first, so I'll just do a selection, and let's just bring that back. Uh, let's also that one. Let's bring this up a wee bit. So if his arms gonna be moved. Fill in that gap there. Bring that up a bit more. You kind of want a bit of impact. So let's delete a couple of these pixels. You can see it all moving. And same for the other side. Just get that extra impact. <coughs> just checking and comparing take your time this is not you know it's not a it's not a marathon or anything like that it's 
just want to make it yours. Right, and now do the little blast. So put a little white dot in there. Surround it by some yellow. Then some pink. And then some orange. Or it's more like a brown. Right, I'll do some little kind of beams coming off like that as well. Let's put a bit more pink in there. Right, and now I want them to light up a bit in certain places. So where the light's going to hit the arm, maybe there, it's going to cast up onto this. And let's do a little light green. some red in the lens. It's great having all these colours. I never used to be able to do all this with the old Commodore. But now, yeah, I'm just taking full advantage of the colour palette and making this game look like it was made for a next-gen Commodore 64, if, they're, you know, if it ever continued its legacy. I could do other stuff uh, to make it more dramatic still, like I could move um, the body up as well and see how that works. Actually looks quite good so I'm going to keep that in and just fill in this gap here with some red and some bits like that. actually make these so and some little highlights sometimes I put little highlights on the boots as well it's picked up a bit of the flash you could even make the shadows bolder because it's creating a shadow as well right that flashes Making a kind of shadow. I want to highlight that edge a bit more. Maybe not as much as that. Alright, so that's going to be shooting downwards. So I'm going to integrate this and then I'll do the shooting upwards. So I'll save that. And bear in mind my ranges are going to change because I've put in an extra idle frame. So let's do that. Go to the player sprite uh, here and I'll just do uh, import. Uh, was it under desktop? idols, got the running. Cool thing is it's left the mask in place as well and the shooting. So 0 to 1 is now the idol so I'm gonna go to the player object and change those, show you how these change. Um, so step event, idle start frame is 0, the end frame is 1. The run is now plus 1 so that's 2 to 5 instead of 1 to 4 and the shooting is now 6 to 7. Now there's a bit of a dilemma with shooting because now we got shoot right and shoot down. That's why I might need an idle down the way and an idle up because if, if the last thing I press was up I want them just to be facing up and when I press space bar you just shoots. I don't have to be pushing up all the time. So that, there's a bit of a dilemma here that I need to fix. But let's have a look at 
the idle at least to see if it's doing the right thing. Might be fast. It's a bit fast. So I just need to go to the idle animation speed to 0.1. Right. So if it's idle, the animation is going to be 0.1. Still a bit too fast. So 025. I try to keep multiples of numbers that I know that are going to add up to a whole number of one after a while. That's cool. Yeah, so he's got his little idle animation in there. And what we don't have is shooting down or walking down or anything like that. So it's going to take a bit of time to get that. I'll make him, I can try and make him shoot down just for the sake of it. So if keyboard check space, yada yada yada. I could also do uh, if keyboard check uh, these two. So I'm doing a check within me pressing space bar. So I need to be pressing space first, then these. So I'll just put a comment and shooting down. Then I'm going to change the uh, the animation starting in frames. Um, so that is frame zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So what I do need is a shoot down, shoot down equals four. Right, I just need to set that state. State equals shoot down animation speed. That's already happening, so I don't have to worry about them. Shoot down now if state equals shoot down. So, this is where I do my little animation range. It just keeps it kind of organized. I could do it in the same state, but it's fine. I just like to have it all here. So that is now going to be 8 and 9. No idea if this is going to work. So let's give it a go. So shooting and shooting down. The only thing I don't have is the bullet moving in the right direction. So I'd need to do the same for shooting up. But that looks cool. Let's actually get that working. Um, so if I'm pressing space, I'm creating this instance. So that is only if I'm facing left or right. I don't want to have to push as well though. See this is this is the difference. Is like I don't want to have to push left or right. So what I could do uh, is check these again and and do like an if not um, if not that or not that or oh, that would be an and actually so definitely not both put both in this big parenthesis just to look good okay so uh, so now it won't fire bullet from shooting down. Okay. I need to do that a different way. So you see nothing's firing off now. Left works, right works, and down I need to make it do something different. So I will make it do this. There's probably an easier way for me to do this, but this is the way I like to think for now. Uh, instance create layer. Direction equals facing. Ah, okay, so direction I can do 0, 90, 180, 270. Right, the bullet's going to look wrong, but it's going to move in the right direction, at least I think it is. Yeah, it's there, but it's not moving. So let's have a look at the 
bullet. So the bullet, for one, is the wrong, the wrong direction. So do I just rotate the bullet? Um, let's have a look at the bullet object. So it goes its direction. Direction's one. That's more like the facing direction. Speed equals eight. Yeah, this isn't what I want. You see, it's, it's shooting across the way. So the way I've made this bullet has been really kind of like, I just need the bullet in there to see what happens. I've not really thought about the directions and stuff. So what I do need is to move, um, move, is it move direction, move, can you use move towards point, um, there used to be a thing like in drag and drop you could set the direction let's see direction what did I get direction wise is it MP MP linear path uh, move potential path None of these have direction things. So what I really want is the angle. We'll get in with angle. Yeah, with drag and drop you had the ability to move an object in a certain in like a certain direction. All I've got is move towards point, which I can kind of use. I just need to know that point. Right, so I can do move towards point. Uh, do target X, target Y, at a speed of eight. Right, and uh -huh. instead of that, right, and my target X and my target Y, is going to be, I'll just make them zero for now, as long as they exist. You see I've commented out the sound effects by the way, just because they were annoying me. Too much kind of noise. I'll let you hear them in a second. Uh, right. Okay. So instead of direction, I'm gonna say I dot TX. Well I'll leave I'll leave in fact, I'll call that facing, right? I got facing equals facing because I want it to draw the sprite correctly. What? No, in fact, no, 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 I'm not talking about it. I'll just do. Direction equals. Oh, God. Um, it was 90 plus. Uh, yeah, I've not figured that out yet. Let's do direction equals 90 and if we're shooting down it's 270. Right, direction equals, I'll just put zero in there. Ah, it's tricky. So if target TX is going to be... Let's see what I'm doing here. Yeah, I'll, forget, I'll figure it out once I test it. So target X is going to be X plus 1000. Right? Target Y is going to be Y, right? So it's the same line as the player. For shooting down, oh, I need to do I dot because we're talking to that instance. I dot, I dot, and sorry if this is a wee bit advanced. It's just me talking to those values, and all I'm doing is getting the the bullet to sort of look at a point in space far away. So for shooting down. Uh, I dot target X is going to be the same, 
so my x plus everything and I want to make the y down so i dot type y oops i dot equals y plus thousand doesn't matter it's just a number to get it far away you also notice I don't do semicolons <laughs> I've just got used to older versions of Game Maker didn't really require it and they still don't require it it doesn't break anything I've made the entire programs and games without them um, you just have to be mindful if you put things in the same line um, that you use you know those colons especially if you've got an if and then a whole bunch of stuff happening in the same line you separate them that way but yeah it's just a bad habit Anyway, I'm going to test that. I'm pretty sure something's going to break. Well, that still works. Oh, he's kind of shooting at an angle. I wonder why he's shooting at an angle. Um, down works, but the bullet's wrong, right? The bullet's the wrong um, rotation, so what I do need is to have direction actually affect that so when I'm drawing the bullet I want to do draw sprite extended x y and I can always look down the bottom and see what the other parameters are scale 1 scale 1 rotation is going to be direction color is going to be c white and alpha is going to be 1 let's see if that actually works uh, So maybe that should be zero for those ones. Yeah, it's kind of working, but the the offset's wrong. Why is the offset wrong? Uh, Can just adjust it, you know, minus 20 or whatever. Yep, it's not enough. Uh, this is shooting down, it is shooting down, isn't it? It's 40. It's not actually changing. And of course, that direction is not right anymore. Hmm, hmm. Do one thousand times facing for that one. There we go. So that's now working. That's now working. He's gone the right direction, but the initial spawn is wrong. Initial spawn of the objects wrong so ah here we go this is create this is what I need 10 times facing I just need it to be x minus 20 it also needs to be the same there so it goes in a straight line that explains some of the movement um, ok maybe that's too much let's do minus 10 least it's in a straight line and let's just do nothing cool beans it's a bit low down and it's a wee bit to the left so I'll add one to these and uh, it's a wee bit low down so I'll just do minus 20 lots of testing yeah, that's almost bang on it's still a wee bit too low so I'll do minus 10 I also want to make sure that I'm minus 29 here so that it goes in a straight line so the spawn point and the target point of these bullets is important there we go I've got a perfectly straight line there and straight line there and I've got them shooting down I think I'm going to make it even in fact that should be minus more minus 40 minus yeah, minus 40 just on the spawn. Shoot 
it and don't. I think it's back. Is it behind them? Is that what's happening? It's actually behind them. It's created on the layer. It's created after the player. Unless I'm setting the depth somewhere of the bullet. Let's just do depth equals depth minus one just to make it in front of. There we go. Now that's working. Right, so we got too high now. Um, so that depth thing just made it so when it's getting spawned on the layer, I'm just making it like one bit higher because it's in the same layer as the player, and the player seems to have priority over it, even though um, the instances have been created after it. You'd think they'd be they'd be you know drawn after it as well, but I'm not too sure what happens there. So minus four is too much, so to minus twenty, and that's for shooting down. Yeah, that's a bit spot on. So holding space can shoot all all around apart from up. Um, that's quite cool. So I do need them to run down is what I need to add next time. Uh, I'll let you hear the sound effects and then I'll wrap this up. Uh, just I made these using JSFX because I'm lazy and I just need something in place. So that was the sound effect for the bullet when it gets when it gets in, uh, instantiated is the right word when it gets spawned. Uh, basically plays that sound on the create event, so it just does it once, the loop is off. Um, the spinners have annoying sound effects. They go and also when they are destroyed, they play, or they, they spawn an instance of a destroy object. The destroy object, when it's created, plays the explosion sound effect. And when the animation ends, which is an add event, uh, other animation end, so it just animates itself and then destroys itself. So that cleans that up. Um, annoying, right? I need some like little sound effects as well. But it's taking shape. You see, there's a lot still to get done. Um, Might add some some tiles to the ground as well, just so we can get some like shadows and things, just to show that these things are floating. And yep. So the original game is called Cybertron Mission, uh, which is kind of based off an arcade game called Bers Berserk, Berserker, Berserk, and you just run around these rooms collecting keys and and things and uh, shooting little alien drones. But I quite like how it's going on so far. So the top bit's going to be used for the score and uh, yeah I've just been making these sprite tiles inside a sprite. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that the next time but I'm going to wrap up this now. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask in the YouTube video when I've uploaded it. It's better to ask in there because I don't look at the, the Twitch stream when I'm streaming. Um, and it means I can get round to that later because now I need to do my job. And I've got like five minutes to get prepped, so I need to go <laughs> catch you guys. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll be sure to upload this to video uh, to YouTube and put some links in there. Um, I'll make a little build as well so you can mess around with this. Uh, likely make an itch page for it. So, catch you guys. Bye.